What happens if they got raised that way and that's the way their dad was? What happens if they're from that culture and that culture says that you have two or three girlfriends or wives? Does that make sense? So that being said, I need to tell you my bias, my thought process. Am I gonna indoctrinate you? No. Am I gonna make you question your beliefs? I'm okay with that. Am I gonna make you have to research your beliefs so you can prove them? I'm okay with that. But I don't wanna to have to apologize for mine. I, was, I grew up in a religious house. I'm still pretty darn religious. I read the scriptures daily, go to church on Sundays, do that crap, pray and stuff like that. I do not believe in sex outside of wedlock. I don't believe in premarital sex and I will prove why in another conversation, why it's just a stupid idea. I'd rather you do it yourself instead of, and which I also believe is wrong, but I'd rather you do it yourself instead of do it with somebody else. Let me give you a quick idea why. Stay in this chick named Robin. I'm her puppy now. She does things for me and I go over and cuddle with her. I feel used. But she's him in my pants and she made me some cowboy caviar so everybody gives what they want to get, right? Robin, when we went out the first night, wanted to make out. And I said, because I don't do sex, right? She knows and I know that she's in the same culture. I said, I don't want to kiss you because it changes everything. As soon as we kiss, instead of me thinking about, can I put up with you, what your good qualities, bad qualities, all that stuff, I'm going to start thinking about with my zipper. I'm going to think about sex. Women do the same thing. You start kissing, making out. The first thing you start doing is thinking with your whatever women think with your heart, your head, your zipper, whatever. You know what I mean? It changes the whole complexion of the relationship. So now you find out if you're physically compatible, you already know you're attracted to them. Otherwise, you're not going to spend time with them, right? Unfortunately, we've all been programmed that we don't do people that that sounded really bad. We don't do. We don't date people we don't find attractive, right? Now you need to find out if you are also physically attracted or you guys, you know, they like horizontal, you like standing up, whatever. Am I being too rude? Anybody here gonna sue me because I raped you with my eyes? We're good? All right. I like to have too much fun and with the mask on, I can't see if you guys are cool with it or if I'm being a jerk. Anyway, that's the way I feel. If you have that physical relationship, that's what it's based off of. And eventually, I'm 45, remember, everything gets you know, once in a while it's like, wah, uh, wah. But eventually life goes boom, 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 boom. And sex is sex is sex. So the guy goes, gets a new girlfriend. The girl complains to her friends. The guy goes, gets a new girlfriend. The girl complains to her friends. That's kind of tradition. Everything's changing now. If you base a relationship on sex, this is how he's beliefs then it is a very shallow relationship. I'll tell you, I shouldn't be able to really say her name, but this girl I went out with one time is dumb as a brick. And we had three things in common. I'm hot, she's pretty hot, right? And she likes the same kind of cars I do. That relationship didn't last very long, right? I need to find more things to go on than that. This doesn't work for me, okay? That's the first thing. My bias is religious. Um, I believe in a conservative lifestyle. I don't believe in blowing all your money. I believe that you should think before you act. I'm not really rebellious. If I, I'm, I'm more of an Eastern philosophy. If I'm gonna be protesting, I'm gonna be sitting in a spot and they're gonna carry me away otherwise instead of putting me in handcuffs and with a brick in my hand. That's just the kind of guy I am, okay? I'm gonna tell you one more thing real quick. This guy's talking about sex. Everybody likes to listen about sex, right? Raise your hand if I'm cool. I mean, it's cool, Brad, keep going on. If I need to change the subject, if I need to change the subject, tell me, all right. I didn't see if your hand rose right there with the clear mask, with the Apple, right in front of you, with Apple computer, are we cool? Yeah. All right. I met this gal at the, this is the way I sit, folks, sorry. I met this gal at the, sea, at the Soul Food Festival in Am Morrison Park, and this had to be eight, 10 years ago. Super fantastic, a really great outgoing personality. I'm, if I don't have a captive audience where you guys can't diss me, I'm usually pretty quiet. But you're paying me to be popular, and that's all cool. 
but she was all over there and I liked her a lot and she was selling this this cream crap that makes my wrinkles go away and she comes says come by my studio we'll do that and I said cool where's your studio she goes to my house I'm like I don't go to a woman's house because it looks like something may happen and I said I'm hot that's what people are going to think right so she says well my husband will be there I said can your husband kick my butt she says oh yeah I said all right I'll go right <laughs> so and that's just appearance I don't want to appear that I am doing something up so I go to her house and I'm and she's she's stuff like that rubbing this crap on my face I'm like am I really gonna look younger or are you just hustling me and we're talking really popular and all of a sudden this guy comes walking down the hallway and he's like six nine probably 300 pounds just this big old guy he looked kind of looked like lurch with a belly you know this mm-hmm. real lumbering guy I said, that's your husband? She says, yeah. And I said, you're right. He could kick my butt. And he came in and got a soda and went back. She said, well, he's a member of this club that you have to have a, an IQ over 200 to be in. He was an engineer. We worked at Lockheed building jets, and I was a receptionist, and we just kind of, you know. I said, cool. So we kept, kept talking about relationships because that's what I do for a living. And, she, I'm just, and we talked about sex, and she says, you have to be compatible. I'm like, okay, whatever. And she says, you got to try it before you buy it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I said, can you give me two minutes without talking? She says, I'll try. I said, okay. And I said, if you start talking, I'm going to do this. She said, okay. And I said, let's say your husband's on the way home from work and he gets in an accident. Completely hypothetical. And he's paralyzed from the waist down. So his flagpole doesn't raise a flag anymore. Do you, that makes sense. You guys don't want to talk about it, right? He is impotent. And she, I said, are you going to divorce him? She goes, no, I love him. I said, oh, so you're not going to dump them. She says, no, no. I said, then how important is sex? If you need to try the horizontal bob or the tube steak bogey or whatever you want to call it before you get married, if it's that important, then you really don't love them. Okay, now let me say, is it fun? Oh, yeah. Do I like it? You bet. But it's not the most important thing. Could I go without Sure don't want him. Am I going to get married again? I sure hope so. But if something really got that bad between now and then, I would do it myself before I would go and get in a relationship that was based off of sex. Or get in a relationship just because I want sex. That's me. I'm conservative. That's the way I think. So when we talk about something and we're in small groups and you want to talk about your part-time business, that was really, really rude. If you want to talk about your escapades or you want to talk about your relationships or you're a player, I'm cool with that. If you're in a group and somebody's talking like that and you don't like it, you need to say something. If they don't calm down, well, they need to shoot me an email. And I'll say something like, group, some of the people here are really sleazy. you got to shut the heck up. If that doesn't work, I'll talk to people individually. Cool? All right. So you know where I'm coming from, but I still want to hear your opinions and your thoughts. And I've had, I've had some arguments, just as loud as I get, about people with porn. They say it enhances our relationship. I said, dude, are you serious? And he says, yeah, we, we, we get more frisky. We have more um, passionate sex. And I said, dude, you need to quit porn for one reason. He said, there's no reason to quit porn. I said, dude, what? I'm, not, I'm still okay, right? I said, you got to quit for, for one reason, dude. He said, what? I said, penis envy. <laughs> what do you think your wife's going to be thinking? What do you think you're going to be thinking? Do you really want her to be comparing you to somebody else? He's like, she doesn't do that. I said, let's just move on. He's like, oh, I didn't make eye contact the rest of the class. <laughs> so there's a problem here. I, I don't like it. I don't want it. I have seen it before. And it's like a drug. It's like one line of meth or one pipe of meth. I want to stay away from it. But it's part of our society. Sorry to put my feet on your guys' face. That's how he, that's how he's biased. That's where how he's going to be coming from. But you can tell that we still need to talk about it because it's life. It's not the part of life I can take part in, but the part I teach about. Now, what I want you to do is get a piece of paper, and I'm okay if you use your notepad on your pen. I'm okay if you use your computer. If you guys want to be on Facebook instead of listening to me, then stay home and watch the recording, okay? Because I want you guys at least eye contact, and you guys are doing good at that. Maybe I'm still interesting. I want you to write down what is the most important part about a relationship. And I'm going to start. 
so I can make it easy for you guys. The most important part about a relationship is attraction. Cool? The second most important part about a relationship is, can you guys read that in the back? Okay, third for me is communication. Basically, somebody listens to me and doesn't interrupt me. That's communication to me. Okay. Now, what I want you to do on your piece of paper is write down at least three things that are important in a relationship to you. Okay, the reason you write down three is everybody's gonna write one on the board. You're gonna come up here from your list and you're gonna write just one thing. If somebody already has that thing, you write something else. If somebody has all three things that you have, then you're just gonna put a check by it, okay? So, every one of these pens are gonna come with a wipe. So after you use the pen, you wipe it off and give it to somebody else. Cool? As soon as you have three things, come on, microwave girl. Is it okay if I mess with you? Yeah. You're cool. All right. <laughs> Hurry up, my favorite girl. If you're done, go. This is the aerobics part Wait, of class. One or three? One. Just one. Remember, either hold your breath when you walk by or social distancing. You're going to leave this and then keep that with you. And then whenever you get done, give it to somebody else. Okay. Right here, dude. Cool. Cool. Right here. Are you shy? Or are you just no. in the back because you were late? Yeah. All right. Do you talk a lot? Is the perfect answer. We oh, might yeah. do that whenever we go, start yeah. talking again. Oh, that works the pen, okay? Thank you. I got one more. Here you go. All right, come on, everybody's got to be participating in this. We're going to start in a second list. Somebody cut all the way over to the other side of the board. Cut all the way over there by sex and write down right there. Yeah, come in and get in line and we'll give you a pen. Take the new one or I'll put the check next to it. They give it to the next person in line that needs one. Oh, you stole mine. Okay. Did I? Let the, no, she did. Put it the next person in line that needs one. Pin with you and your rag and give it to the next person in line. Just get all the way over there and buy that with half button and red. You have? I was so frustrated. I yeah. I did it on one of my favorite characters. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. So, my daughter was still there. Really? So now I'm going to go cuddle with my ex girlfriend and she's going to fix my pants for me. <laughs> go all the way over to that side, go to that list, and go right here. Okay, nobody else. Just put a check next to it. Okay. Nobody else needs to All right, that's mine now. Thank you. Not your pants. I'm going to wipe it off. Oh, you want to wipe it off? Good. Thank you. Oh, no, this was a permanent marker. Did you use this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I gave you guys a bad pen. Thank you. Thank you. That was on me. What'd you write? There's nothing else to talk about. Thanks, buddy. I've done that before. In the we'll probably yeah, and, and if you do this over the top of it, it goes away. Somebody told me that. Because I left words like this and this on the board and I couldn't erase them. The next teacher came in, they're like, what the heck? All right. <laughs> Love Jesus, acceptance, same life goals, trust, loyalty, able to compromise. 
let's talk about that real quick. In a relationship, and if I'm wrong, raise your hand. You don't have to explain it to me if you want to, that's cool. In a relationship, there's always one person that says, I'm sorry, and one person that says, yeah, you better be. <laughs> there's always one person that apologizes and the other one never does. My daughter, 30 years old, I'm a single mom, always have been a single mom. She has said, I'm sorry, three times, and one time I didn't hear her. She's probably in another room saying, oh, I'm so sorry that I did that to my dad. But she said sorry to me twice in 30 years. She has now learned that she'll go, and I tell her, if you're mad, go be mad somewhere else. I don't want to deal with your crap. And if I'm mad, I go be mad by myself, right? Then she'll text me, oh, what are you doing for dinner? Which means I'm sorry, or I'm ready to be happy again. I'm cool with that, you know? In a relationship, there's always somebody able to compromise and the other person is just like, more rigid or jerk, right? Does anybody disagree? What's better? I feel it's being compassionate. You cannot change anybody else, you can only change yourself, right? Communication is good, emotional connection. Respectful, attraction, sex, communication, honesty, fun, feelings, looks. Fun is a very weird word because what's fun to you is probably boring to me. I don't like the word stupid, I use it too much. So, cool this, right? Now, let's say you met this person at church. And he's saying hallelujah, and you're saying hallelujah. We don't do that at my church, but you're both praying together. He prays, and you're like, oh, he is so spiritual. Cool? What are you going to lose from this? He probably doesn't do this unless he watches porn because he's so religious, right? If he does, it's probably really vanilla, boring. I'm just assuming something here, right? Okay, if he's a churchgoer, some churchgoers just don't have fun. We're stereotyping here, aren't we? Okay, some people are churchgoers, and they do have fun. I go to church, and I like to read so, anyway, um, in my ward or in my church congregation, there's 100 families, okay? If this so happens, there's probably six, okay, so that's 50 women, let's say, let's add a, that are married, okay? Six are hot. It seems like people that are really hot get drawn into the world and they do things that are like jet skiing and river rafting and crap like that where people that are going to church they wear less makeup they're kind of more inward instead of ah look at me right so if they're going to church generalizing see ya if, I, if, if you disagree with me you just have to raise your hand you don't have to tell me okay <laughs> You're gonna have this, I think. Same life goals, probably. Acceptance, I'm hoping if you're going to church, you're gonna be accepting of people. You just picked the wrong seat, didn't you, girl? <laughs> Able to compromise, you would hope. Well, I mean, what would, if I sound sacrilegious, I'm sorry, what would Jesus do? Communication, that's rough for everybody. We're gonna talk a lot about that this semester. Emotional connection, to me, what's the difference between sex and emotional connection? Depends on how you show your emotion, right? So, if you meet somebody at church, are you gonna have a complete, whole, soulmate kind of love? No. Okay, let's say you meet at a dance club, and you stop from dancing like, dancing regularly, then you start doing that dancing, that grinding, right? And then you go to your house and do some grinding horizontally. What are you gonna lose in that relationship? Are you gonna trust them? All that crap they told you to get you there, are you gonna trust that? Hopefully you have this or else you have tequila, right? One of the two. Feelings. Fleshy feelings, right? Are you gonna have feelings here? That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Same life goals where their goal is for tonight, not life, right? So what I see about where you meet people and where you have interaction, introduction changes things. Cool. Now let me show you. We're going to make a chart like this on our own for our class, but in about three weeks. Stay. Sit. Sit. Good. 
and I'll do this all season long. I'm sorry, I just got way too much caffeine in my system. I wish caffeine gave me that much energy. What's that? I said, I wish caffeine gave me that much energy. Well, I'm a little bit ADD too, so. <laughs> and I don't mind. Okay, I need to get this out of the way. Get out of the way. So these are going to be the components we're going to talk about real quick. I've had students that told me that they don't tell me the first night. I don't have a girlfriend or I don't have a boyfriend. I've never had a girlfriend, never had a boyfriend. I married my high school sweetheart and they're in the military and I haven't had sex for a year. I'm like, TMI. I, I didn't need to hear that, right? But we have a safe space here and we can say things like that, okay? I've heard a lot of people say that I'm hitting a wall with my relationship or I'm deciding if it's cool or not cool, but I don't want to be alone. So, oh crap, you guys didn't tell me you couldn't see it. And that's all well and fine, and that's what I do, and that's what I talk about. But let's replace the word relationship with love, modern love. Love is different now than whenever I grew up. When we read Asadi's book, he's going to talk about what love was when people were like in Second World War. What love was like in the 60s, like right? the flower child and hippies, where you just live in the park with a bunch of other people and you swap partners at night and stuff. Nasty. But they didn't have as many venereal diseases back then as they do now. And they were cured by penicillin back then. Nowadays, it's like, oh, the gift that keeps on giving, right? Mm -hmm. So if we replace the word romance with love, to me, a pickup line is an introduction line. How are you gonna start a conversation, right? I got the world's best pickup line, and it works over half the time to start a conversation. That's all we wanna do, right? Then if made eye contact, they start <laughs> catching over you, you got it made, right? But not always. What happens to the introduction line? You start talking to somebody about a job. That's a type of love. We're gonna talk about next week, the different kinds of love. So. Instead of this class, all they're talking about is your relationship with somebody or your relationship with um, a potential boyfriend or girlfriend or somebody you're stalking at night. Let's take this off. Oh, this won't let me edit it without downloading. Let's take off the bottom two. Think about your closest friend that you don't date. How many of those things do you have with them? Do you spend time? Do they actually you have your independence? Or always say, where are you at? Think about a parent if you have a decent family or you have a decent parent. Sometimes people get a raw deal in life. You have those components of love with a parent, with your best friend, right? So when we talk about how to nurture relationships, how to avoid crappy relationships, we're going to be talking about the same thing. This class isn't going to be limited to a romantic or physical relationship. It's also going to talk about other relationships. And you need to be able to, in your mind, look globally, look wide, instead of just thinking one thing. I'm way okay if you're like 30 or you just got divorced or something and you want to date. I'm cool with that if this is how you apply this information to your life. But I don't want to miss you then miss out how this information can also apply to other parts of your life. Cool? All right. Anybody, don't show your hands. Anybody ever have a dad that's never told you I love you? Or never hugged you? You might have had a mom like that. My grandpa never told my dad I love you or never hugged him. My dad learned how to love from his parents. And he taught me how he loves from the way he grew up, right? And it has perpetuated, gratefully, I was a mama's boy, and then I got an education in interpersonal communications, and I'm different. I was always kind of different anyway. Special, they say. But anyway, um, we'll look at, during the semester, how people love, how people are narcissists, but how people love. There's gonna be a lot of people that care about you, but you don't know that because they're not showing you love the way you want to be loved. That chick Robin that I was dating for a while, 
she um, shows up, I want to cuddle all the time. I'm like, that's not what I want. I just want somebody to listen to me, ramble, and grunt and nod at the same time, at, at the right times, right? If some of you like to talk about the same academic crap I do, that'd be great, or read the same kind of books I do, that'd be great too, but that's that whole list crap, and that to me is hard to find. How many people here believe in a soulmate? Five, six out of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Out of 20 people, six believe in that. You know what that means? There's no such thing. That's the way it works in social sciences. So, this is where I grab my water bottle and take a drink relax for a second but there is no food or drink on campus emotional intelligence this is tough because we have mask on one of the problems we have is Back in the day, I'd, I'd work for a living. I'd come home after work and I'd sit on the couch and I'd say, oh, and turn on the TV to what? I don't care. And just sit there and kind of just veg for a while. And because I'm old, my face sags. And some people call it resting girl face, resting bitch face, or whatever. I don't like using that word. And old dudes, it's the same thing happens. My daughter would come in, she goes, oh, I'm going to tell you something. I said, whatever. And she goes, oh, I can't, you're mad. I'm not mad. I'm just tired. She goes, no, I'll tell you later. I said, whatever. You know, that's fine. She goes, but I really wanted to tell you, but you're mad. I said, I'm not mad, but my face looked mad. She goes, but you're too mad. I don't want to say this because it won't be good. I said, then that's fine. Don't say it. She goes, but I really wanted to tell you, but you're mad. I said, I'm not mad, but I'm getting mad because you keep saying I'm mad. But my face looked because I was tired and I got that droopy on my you know what I mean? I don't look like I'm gonna work for whatever. You know what I mean? This, when you get old, that's the way your face looks. I could get in real trouble for doing what I just did, so please. So with emotional intelligence, what you need to do is be more aware of the situation, be able to read people's eyes to see if they're paying attention or not, and just not rely on one thing. What happens is, can't do that because you can't see my mask, right? Across the world, there's eight different emotions that everybody can recognize. If you send your food back in a restaurant and they bring it back to you with spit flavoring or they drop it on there, whatever, they bring it back to you and you see contempt right here. That's the way the person's like, you just put me out. I had to do something I didn't want to do. You made me look bad. I don't like you, contempt, all right? When somebody's happy, you know it. That's hard to find. I got a couple of kids that live across the street that got seven, and I hang out with five of them, the five boys, and they got a single parent household and stuff, and it's rough. And I had two of them with me, and we were out mowing lawns because we're nice guys. And we went to Maverick to get something to drink, and I only had one mask. And so I went to Maverick, and I got what I wanted. Then I gave the guy five bucks. He went and got what he wanted. Then the other brother went in and got what he wanted. And they came back. I said, you know what? I just let snot rock like in the mask before I gave it to you. And they're both grossed out, like trying to puke. And I didn't do it. I'm just harassing them. I laughed so hard. For, I still laughing this thinking about it. Now, I can tell right now that I didn't do it. And I didn't do it, but he won't believe me. It was just hilarious. That's easy to see, right? Fear is easy to see. You ever been in a house or have families that just like to hide around the corner? I had a stepson to get under the car. I took my wife's car and we went shopping. We came back and we parked in the driveway, opened the garage door, and we're walking by my car, which is in the garage, and he reached out and grabbed my ankle. Just about crap my pants. Dropped groceries all over the place. It was great. You can recognize that. Disgust. You ever change a diaper your first time? Sad, easy, surprises, easy, angry. We all been there, seeing that neutral. It's like I get whenever I work a long day and I just sit on the couch and do this. But my neutral face looks like frustrated face. Makes sense, right? Now, 
If you are emotionally shallow compared to emotionally intelligent, this is what you're going to give everybody. You know eight words, and that's all you know. But life happens like this. Can you read everything on there? Fear, happy, content, neutral. Somebody tell me which one's neutral. This one? Here, this one? Yeah. Anybody agree with the main cats if you agree? Okay. Which one did you say? Who's, who just spoke? The first one. So you're thinking this is neutral? Anybody agree with that? It's tough, isn't it? What is this one right here? Uh, yes, Wonder Woman. Disgust. I like that. Yeah. Disgust. Anybody agree? A couple of us. A lot of us are going like, this is hard. I feel right? like a few of these can go with the same word. Yeah. Who said that? Thank you. I agree with that, that some of them could be duplicates, right? He could have like something in his eye and be happy, right? <laughs> so. It's tough, but not being emotionally intelligent, you're gonna say, huh? But you can kind of say, you look sad, but you kind of look like you need paint on your face to work for the circus, right? Yeah, his sad face looks fake. Yeah, seriously. So, but. I think it'd be different if we could see the whole body. Out. You think it'd be different what? If we could see the whole body, yeah. Why, My body language can say something completely different than I my agree. face does. I agree. I think he's a really bad actor. What would you say? <laughs> I feel like the guy at the bottom, second bottom. Second bottom? Like, yeah, that, yeah. Uh -huh. I can go with like a lot of it, but also work with what she said. That also kind of looks like when someone looks at like, what the heck is wrong with you? Yeah, like dude. Dude is my favorite word in the English language. You can say like <laughs> 12 different things with dude, like dude, or dude, or <laughs> I could keep going, but it, it makes a difference with the mask. You gotta have the whole body language stuff. Okay. That's interesting because I think that that one is uh, the only one that really looks happy. His whole face is involved with the with the, and the other ones are just kind of. I've got this great picture of Julia Roberts because that's my celebrity crush. I don't got like pictures on the wall or anything, <laughs> but I've got this picture in one of my PowerPoint demonstrations. And um, could you pass these up? Just give like three of each row they can pass them down, okay? Um, and there's wrinkles in your forehead right here. And you see these wrinkles? That tells a lot. If somebody's thinking, okay, if somebody, if they, they raise up like this, then you know they're either surprised or happy. And you can see when she's smiling for real, she's on a um, talk show, she's smiling. Then she smiled for real with some dude she's with, and it made all the difference, you know? And somebody in the classroom earlier, when I was telling one of my stupid, stupid jokes I pulled over and over again, they were smiling, that's the only why I knew, it's because of this right here. So you look right here, and you can see here and here, but there's really no 